Ooh, what's this then? I guess we should uh, slap some intro music here. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. This is going to take too long. I think we need some sort of weird hyperspace thing. Let's go. then so this week we're going to do something a little bit different you don't get to see me and my ugly mug in front of the camera we're uh, doing a drawcast uh, draw so what I'm doing this week is sketching and art isn't my main thing in fact my artistic talent is precisely minus 10 uh, so hopefully this will be all right uh, but I thought it might be fun just to watch the progress so what I'll be sketching is what each room looks like from a player's point of view, and I'll use these directly in Visionaire for a rough concepting of the game. In the meantime, I can give these to James, he can have a look at them, change them, redesign them in whatever way he sees fit, and then when I get them back from him, I can rescan them in and get them re-imported into Visionaire, uh, and then that'll be the basis for actual game development. Now, before I get stuck into drawing actual rooms, uh, I wanted to quickly recap on what I was saying last vlog about changes that had been made into the overall level design. Now, if you remember, I talked about a lab that the player will be spending quite a bit of time in being almost relegated to secret room status, and that's not what we wanted. We wanted it to be very accessible. So what this would mean would be a small change to the overall layout of the game, that would make the room more obvious and more accessible uh, so that it wasn't stuffed up and away in the corner. Uh, now, what I'm working on right now is what the game design looked like previously. And you can see at the very top, the lab just almost stuck onto the top. And it's not obvious even from the main player's area that this uh, place even exists. And I don't know why we didn't see it earlier on. Uh, but in any case, uh, we've seen it and we're going to make the changes as follows. Both labs will be the starting focus uh, and will increase the size of the main game area so that the player can easily see that they've got access to them or not as the case may be. And the hallway and the locker room will stay the same and just are bolted onto the bottom. Uh, and that makes for a more coherent game design we feel. Uh, and it just looks better overall. Right, so it's on to the fun stuff. So the first room we're going to tackle is the hallway. Uh, and although it's maybe not the funnest room to look at, it's actually one of the most important rooms. Um, the doorway at the end of the hallway is actually the main exit from the game. That's the idea behind this whole game. You've got an hour to get out of this situation that you found yourself in and this is the door you've got to get out of. So this is actually quite an important room although you'll not be spending much time here it's all in the other rooms. You have a doorway and a window to the left which is the main office area and a doorway to the right which leads to the locker rooms. This next room is the main office area and this is where the player is going to be spending the majority of their time. This is going to have the most objects uh, and is the most story dense. Uh, it's also multiple screens, uh, so it's actually a scrolling level. Uh, and as you can see, it's, it's, I'm designing it in sort of like a widescreen format just to cover multiple screens. 
Uh, from the left hand side you've got the window and the door which is uh, accessible from the hallway and then you've got two viewing windows at the very back. One is very very nasty and the other is very very light and we'll talk about that later. You've got the airlock or decontamination area door in the middle uh, and then the rest of the room is going to be littered with various objects for the player to discover. Moving on, uh, we're going into the sort of decontamination area, and this is another hallway scene. Uh, on the left-hand side, there'll be one of the labs, and from the main viewing window, it will be just awful uh, and hideous, and you'll not know what on earth is going on. And then on the right-hand side, you'll have another viewing window, and it'll all be sort of like bright light, happy, and, uh, and it'll be quite obvious that basically on one side, you might not be able to get in uh, because there's some sort of lockdown going on and on the other side you can get in quite freely and have a bit of a mess around. One of the ideas I'm playing around with is that when you move to a certain area in this scene the view will automatically change to sort of like a landscape view and display whatever the player's character is looking at. So you can actually see in horrific gory detail each of the windows uh, and each of the doors to each of the labs. It's just an idea at the moment, but this is what uh, prototyping is all about, and as we do testing within it, we'll see if it's viable or not. Now the next two rooms on the agenda are going to be the labs. Now, they're effectively the same, so I only have to draw one. Um, the player only has access to one at the start of the game, uh, although they can see what's going on in the other, uh, which will be a horrific mess of weird crap. The main observation window is to the left, uh, and once finished, this room will be dressed with all manner of bits and pieces. Um, this door I'm drawing right now is to show where the player comes in and the frame of the window from the outside. For the next room, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning and we're going to concentrate on the locker room. Now for this one, I wanted a slightly different perspective, more of a top-down angle just to show everything in the room because it's only a little room. This area is where the player characters and their colleagues will come in in the morning, get changed for work, shower um, at both the beginning and the end of the day uh, and it serves as a little extra room where we can bury a few hidden objects, uh, a few little trinkets uh, and a few other bits and pieces that the player might find useful in their hour-long mission to get out of this place. A small amendment to this room which I'm making right now is basically the shower and toilet room. Uh, I, I didn't think it was prudent to put the shower and toilets in the main locker area, so I'm just creating this extra little room with shower, toilet, uh, basins and some other basic bits and pieces. Uh, and it might be nice to have another little extra sub room on the back of it uh, to hide bits and pieces or just to put some clever little graffiti on the walls. So that is it. That is your lot for this week. Those are all the rough concept sketches for each room in life cycle. Uh, those are going over to James right now and he'll have a look at those and come up with much, much better versions of them. Uh, they will be a work in progress as they continue uh, and I'll just keep on updating them and I'll show you how they uh, progress. As always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, there'll be more next week, uh, hopefully more to show, more to tell and all that kind of rubbish. Uh, there are more bank holidays to come, which is, always messes up with the video schedule, uh, but we'll see how we go. See you again soon. Now the next new... Bingo! Semi-noodle! Oh, la la!